Hi, welcome to the second video on the TED policy. In the previous video, I've shown you this diagram and we've gone over the theory of the TED algorithm. What I would like to do in this video though, is show you TED in practice and to give you an example that shows that having a transformer here really makes a difference. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start a new Raza project locally on my machine and I'm going to show the effect of TED as well as the hyperparameter for the lookback size in this transformer. So let's get started with that. So I'm in a folder called demo TED in practice and I've got a virtual environment in Python going and this virtual environment already has Raza installed. So what I can then do is tell Raza to initialize a new project. Now there's a few things I have to tell Raza at the moment. I have to give it a path where the project will be created, and I think the current directory is fine. And now it's placed a couple of folders and files here, but I'm not gonna train a model just yet. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to make some changes to the NLUMD file as well as the stories file. And I'm also gonna fiddle around with the configuration here and the domain here. So here's the changes that I've made to the NLU.md file. And this is the file where you give examples for different intents. Let's go over some of the intents. The first intent is that I would like my chatbot to greet. The main feature of the chatbot though, isn't just to say hello. The main feature instead is that it has to do a countdown. And the idea is that the countdown starts when the intent start count has been detected. Then there are two minor intents. I would like this digital assistant to be able to confirm and also for it to be able to say goodbye. But one thing that might happen while the chatbot is performing its countdown is that the user is going to interrupt the chatbot by asking it whether or not it is a human. And it will then be the task of the chatbot to recover. So now that we have examples for all of these intents, the next thing we have to do inside of Raza is make some stories with these intents. Here's my stories.md file. This file describes how sequences of intents need to be handled. For example, this story says, there's been a greeting, which was then later correctly followed by this utter greet action. Similarly, the user had an intent here of starting to count, which was then followed by the action utter the countdown number 10. And if you were to follow down this happy path, you will see that the user is confirming and then the chatbot continues counting down. And we're confirming and counting down, et cetera. When we're here at the bottom, eventually we utter goodbye and then the correct action to take would be to utter goodbye back. This is an example of the happy path though but there are other conversational paths that our digital assistant will need to be able to navigate. For example, I've got two really short ones down below where the only thing that's happening is that the user says goodbye or that the user is checking whether or not the bot is a human. But here is a more interesting story path where as the countdown is happening, there's some interruptions. For example, here, while the chatbot is counting down, the user suddenly doesn't do a confirmation, but instead is challenging the bot, whether or not it's a human. And in that situation, the correct response would be to first verify that we're still dealing with a digital assistant and not an actual human. But afterwards, we have to go back to counting down immediately before listening to what the user has to say. And it would be nice if our digital assistant will be able to generalize this. So this was one example of a story path that has an interruption, but I've made some more. So I've got another one over here. And you can see that there's an interruption over here just before the ninth countdown. And there's another one over here just before the seventh. And I've got one more path down below here where there's a bot challenge at the bottom. And finally, I've got this example that has lots and lots of challenges in it. 
over here, here, here. Now, there's one thing to note in particular. In every example that I've shown you, every story so far, we've never done a bot challenge intent just before countdown number four. And I'm going to be remembering that because that means that if at some point the digital assistant is able to generalize the interrupt at this point in the countdown, then I can argue that that's a clear signal of generalizing, that our policy mechanism is working in the way that we would like it to. With my stories.md file done, what I will need to do is hook everything together inside of this domain.yaml file. And here you can see the contents of my domain.yaml file. You can see that I've written down all of the intents, as well as all of the actions that the digital assistant needs to be able to handle. And when we scroll down at all the responses, we can see that the actions that the chatbot will take are just utterances and they're relatively simple. So we're gonna be counting down, countdown exclamation point ETA 10 and an emoji. And I've got that filled in for all the numbers up until the end. So this is the data that our digital assistant will be learning from. To now investigate what the effect is of our policies, we'll have to make some changes in this configuration file. Because this config.yaml file declares all the settings for the machine learning pipelines that Raza is using under the hood. And in particular, we're gonna leave the settings over here alone. These settings are meant for detecting entities as well as identifying which intent the user is taking. Instead, what we're more interested in is how the sequence of dialogues is handled, and those items are set here. These are the policies. And in particular, you can see over here that we've got the TED policy. So this over here, that's where we're going to be making our changes. So what you see here are the policy settings above. They are from the config.yaml file. And then over here, I have a terminal which gives me a place where I can talk to the digital assistant that I'll be training. And what I'll just go ahead and do is, let's assume that we don't have the TED policy, but instead are only using the memoization policy and the mapping policy without any settings. What this setting effectively will do is it will just look at the stories that I have, and if there's a match in the story, then it's able to predict a good next action. These are bad settings, and we're gonna see in a moment why. But let's first train Raza, and then we'll see what happens in the shell. Okay, so we're done training now. I'll just clear the terminal, and then I'll start talking to my assistant by typing Raza shell. Okay, so I'll start saying hello, and that works fine. Then I'll ask, are you a bot? And again, that works fine. But now I will ask the assistant to start with the countdown. And it starts at 10, that is good. Then nine, then eight. But let's now see what happens when I ask, hey, are you a bot? And we don't get a proper action back. And that's because these settings are rather naive. They really just try to make a simple match of something that we may have seen before in the stories.md file. And if we have a story that doesn't perfectly match, well, we're gonna fail here. So it feels like adding Ted back in is gonna help us out. So what I'm just gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna quit this shell, and then I'm gonna put the Ted setting back in here. But let's set the setting to a max history of two now, and let's just see what happens if we just do that. And again, I'll run train and then start the shell again. So this is now retrained, and I'll just run the shell again and repeat everything that I've just done. So again, I'll start by saying hello. That looks good. Are you a bot? That also looks good. And now let's start counting. And I'll say okay here. And let's over here ask, are you a bot? So the response in this case is better, but it is making a mistake. I've got an ETA here of nine, and I would expect the ETA here to be eight. 
So the assistant is picking the wrong action at the moment. Sure, it's an improvement of what we saw before, but it's not 100% right. And if I were to type OK here, it continues the ETA countdown, so it's not the worst. But let's see what happens if we just increase the history back to its default setting. And I'll retrain once again. The model has just retrained with a max history of 5, so let's check out this shell one more time. Now for good measure, I'll just type hey, and that works. Are you a bot? And again, this works. Let's now start counting. Okay, okay. Are you a bot? And this is starting to look better. I can type okay again here. Again. And we are right before the fourth count, so let's ask are you a bot here as well? And it seems to pick this up rather nicely, so this makes me quite happy. I'll ask are you a bot once again here? And here we're seeing that it's still not quite perfect. It's definitely better than anything we've seen so far, so I like where this max history setting is going, but it's making a mistake over here. The ETA number that I would have expected here is 3, not 2. So I figured as a final experiment, it would be pretty interesting to now change this max history to 10. And what I've done is I've trained the system beforehand, so what I can now do is just explore via the shell. So let's try this out. Hey, looks good. Are you a bot? Looks good. Start counting. Okay, okay. Are you a bot? Are you a bot? Okay. Are you a bot? So despite our best efforts with the hyperparameter, we see that it's making a mistake over here. So that means that indeed, we cannot fix everything with a hyperparameter. In this particular case, we need to also think about adding some data. But to wrap up this video, I would like to take a little bit of time now to just zoom in on that max history, what that parameter exactly does, because it will explain why we've been able to get a better system by using TED. So to wrap up, I've drawn the schematic from the previous video on the right hand side, and I've copied a story path from my stories.md file, and that's what you see on the left. Now, let's imagine what happens to this transformer in terms of data that it's getting during training or inference. And let's suppose we are at some point in this dialogue where we've received this confirm intent over here. We've also had this response. And then we saw this bot challenge with yet another two responses come out. Well, then in this case, we have five sets of features coming in. And it's going to be these five sets of features that are going to, over here, predict what the next best action is going to be. And you can imagine that if I were to increase the transformer here, that I would have more data at my disposal to make that decision. And conversely, if I were to make the transformer really, really small, well, then I would not have as much information at my disposal to make a decision on what the next best action should be. This will be less of a problem if I had a conversation which was one-on-one. -on -one. We have an intent and one action belongs to it. But since this use case is really prone to interruptions, we're going to notice if our max history size is too small. And this ability to look further back, that is something that in general, for digital assistants, is something that is really useful. And that is also why I think that the max history parameter for TED is probably its most interesting hyperparameter. If you have a digital assistant where context in the conversation really goes back quite a few time steps, then increasing this max history is a good idea. And this is something that you'll have to figure out for your own digital assistant as well. The example that I have here is somewhat artificial. Odds are that you're going to have a chatbot with more meaningful actions in it. That said, if you have lots of context and you want to make sure that that influence makes it all the way to the back, then this max history parameter is probably the first thing that you should play with.